Okay, so um, I'm very pleased today to be joined on our next Legends series by uh, Dids McDonald, who is the master of the Furniture Makers Company. So welcome, Dids. Thank you. We very much appreciate this opportunity. Thank, Thank you for you attending. For the Perfect. So what we're going to do today is we're going to ask some structured questions, and the intention is to give to the wider furniture industry some smart solutions and some good advice primarily. So, first question, if I can ask, please, is obviously you're originally from York, um, that's correct. Um, so, when did you first indirectly and then directly get involved in the furniture industry? Well, as you may or may not know, I had a 12 year uh, career in the airline industry. This is British Airways. British Airways. Yeah. Um, um, and at that time, there was no, re there was no way that women could progress. Um, yeah. And so, I decided to leave with severance. And a friend and I uh, decided to set up an interior design company. This is the one in Chelsea? Yes. Right. Um, so way back in, I think it was 1985, right. uh, we kind of set forward and um, started an interior design company yeah. um, in Lots Road in Chelsea. Okay. So, yeah. so what was the inspiration that drove you to, to decide from Flying Concord, I believe, to uh, setting up an interior design business? What was the driver? I had a, a business background before that, and uh, mm. my partner had um, a history in design and creating. Oh, okay. And so we thought we'll put them, both of them together. The two together, yeah. I also have a, a, a very creative approach to life and also mm. to, um, to design. So I thought mm. it was a, an ideal combination. And right. you know what it's like when you're young, you think, well, that sounds good, we'll go yeah, for it. Right. How did you find working with your partner initially on that side? Yeah, it was excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I think the thing that flying brings is that um, you've got to think of contingency, you've got oh. to be creative, because if you're up in the air and you haven't got things, uh, right. you've got to be creative. And good so teamwork, of course. Very good teamwork, mm. and that uh, was proven in our first job. We got a, a break um, doing the apartments for the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi oh, right. behind Harrods. Um, the reason we got it was because no one else in London would touch it. Because was it like an apartment scheme, was it? Or yeah. Oh, wow. Um, about 20 bedrooms. Right. So um, because we were, I guess, a little bit naive, we said, of course, we'll do it. And mm. because we said we'd do it, we delivered. So you were um, project managing the, the scheme at the same time? Project managing, wow. yep. um, finding suppliers, doing a complete refurbishment. Right. And um, that taught us an awful lot um, very quickly. It also gave us the finance to really sort of right. uh, set us on the road. Mm. Number one with buying our own premises right. and a company car. And we were able to use that um, investment to really sort of uh, pave the way for the future. Mm, fantastic. So, so where we are today at the Furniture Makers Hall here in London, so I'm correct in saying you're the 58th master to be recently appointed? Correct. Okay, so could you just set out your key objectives for the future? Well, I'm very mm. clear that um, it was really about connecting you know, with the in industry by mm. effective communication. Right. And um, one of the things that I've really championed is um, w welfare. Mm. We are, we've been going for 100 years in terms of welfare. Um, originally is the FTBA and then FIT, and then the two charities merged. But we are still the best kept secret. So mm. I was determined to start a one step at a time campaign yes. to reach 330,000 people with a very strong message. Mm. Um, not only about um, welfare, but also about education. That's part of our DNA, yes. um, supporting educational yes. and training um, uh, for really tomorrow's leaders, tomorrow's generation. Future. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And um, at furniture, uh, furniture Makers today, we have our Young Furniture Makers exhibition. Mm. Um, 120 um, school leavers, young mm. furniture makers, uh, tomorrow's entrepreneurs are out there mm. as we speak. Mm. And this mm. hall is buzzing yes. with people from, um, from the industry who want to find out more. It's a fantastic opportunity for mm. um, industry leaders and key influencers mm. to see what is emerging and newer talent. Mm but also to be offering placements, support. Mm. Um, and that's obviously the thing that we do within the livery. Mm. Um, our other core pillar um, is excellence. Mm. Uh, we need to get the message out that the UK is a thriving um, furniture, mm. furniture and furnishings industry. Mm. And we will only do, do that by being the best at the best. Mm. And so our guild marks, uh, design guild mark, manufacturing, export, sustainability, um, and uh, 
bespoke mm. are the really the marks that people aspire to. Mm. So very much encouraging young talent to come through yep. and giving them the vehicle to find out where they get that information from as well about getting into the industry. Absolutely. Is this also about um, talks potentially to universities and schools and education? Talks to universities, yeah. um, awarding bursaries, fellowships, mm. um, really looking at the courses where they're doing. We'll have a lot of tutors and school teachers, for example, today. Yes. Um, and in the world of fintech and digital um, mm. focus, it's good to also yes. focus on an industry that's going to have a skills shortage. Mm. And so from a point of view of getting in, people interested in this mm. industry, mm. it could not be a better time. Perfect. And I think that we're now seeing a move towards uh, quality in British uh, manufacturing and furniture mm. and furnishings. Um, Instead of we had this sort of wave of, of cheap Chinese imports, right. and I think people are looking for quality, for customer service, and the heritage mm. that some of our British brands um, within this industry mm -hmm. are really sort of flag flying, great. and rightly so. Great stuff. So uh, uh, it's a great lead, actually. So in terms of um, other British manufacturers, you know, we'd like obviously them to get involved too in terms of that message and training and education. It's a, it's actually a sexy industry, isn't it? It's not a, a get your hands dirty and you know, people perhaps thought about in the past. Mm. So I think in terms of let's say we're looking to encourage more manufacturers to join the company, what would you say to uh, a British manufacturer would be a reason for them to get involved as well? Well, I think primarily it's about giving something back. Mm. Everybody who's involved with the furniture makers company is here because we want to give something back. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in terms of manufacturers becoming involved, mm. it's very much, I mean, we have a corporate membership of about 30. It's very much saying, well, if I'm not involved, why mm. not? Right. Because this, this is the heart of the um, furniture and furnishings industry in terms of um, the overriding body mm. and I don't think anybody would uh, be dissuaded by the fr three fundamental um, objectives of welfare, education and training Absolutely. and excellence. Absolutely. So I yeah. think it's really a no-brainer. Um, Perfect. Yeah. And also we're seeing such a, um, a, mm. a trend towards the circular manufacturing which is, uh, you know, has these sustainability objectives mm. and it's about our British manufacturers raising the bar mm -hmm. and let's face it with the, the, the current climate with this mm. uh, Brex Brexit diversion, mm -hmm. um, it's about shouting about UK Global. Uh, we're amazingly good at design, mm. very good at manufacturing, yes. good at making and yes. we need to be shouting about it with a collective voice. Perfect. So what, what would you say um, in terms of what makes a British manufacturer different? What makes us different? I think that design is a, a key element. Um, design mm. is worth £84.5 billion pounds to the UK right. economy. This industry contributes £17.5 billion to right. the UK economy. Mm. It um, supports 330,000 jobs. Mm. Design as a whole um, supports 1.5 million jobs. Yeah. So from the consumer's point of view, it's a good message to support British manufacturing, which supports the economy. Yeah, very good so mantra. Yeah, yeah. Mm. absolutely. Perfect. So, okay, so... So June 2015, you received your OBE for your service to the design industry, so congratulations for Thank that. Thank you. Um, what advice can you offer which would help others to follow your good work? Well, I was awarded by um, Her Majesty uh, the, uh, that honour because of my work in intellectual property. Right. And I think when one looks at the intellectual capital behind our UK British brands mm. um, it's something worth protecting as is the intellectual property which becomes part of it. This is the ACID organisation? Yes, that's, that's um, right, I found, co founded You're the CEO for that? Yeah, yeah. I co-founded that in uh, 1998 when my own products were copied. Right. Um, our major achievement was that we managed to change the law through a campaign and I guess uh, having an honour has allowed me to shout a bit more loudly about it. Mm. Um, we live in a copycat world. China are, th are the worst um, proponents of copying. Um, and it's about having a culture of respect for intellectual property, mm. uh, compliance with intellectual property, and shouting about mm. originality and innovation. Mm. And we're very good at it in the UK. Mm. Well, we've seen today at the, um, the exhibition for the young um, designers today, some fantastic innovation today, isn't there? Superb, it really yeah. is good, and that should be encouraged, isn't it? Well, the thing is that unless we encourage uh, tomorrow's innovators and mm. creators, um, we're going to be left 
without mm. that sort of, you mm. know, them coming through. Well, so we're saying protect that talent as well, aren't we? In number one, protect the, the talent. Yes. And number two, support yeah. it and endorse it and yes. create those partnerships. Encourage I mean, more of it, yeah, exactly. At Furniture Makers, we have a, an initiative where we support um, young professionals going out over a three-week period mm. to all the um, major manufacturers in this country. Mm. They can see inside industry. So, for example, they can see uh, in, in Knightsbridge Furniture, for example, mm -hmm. a tree trunk, and after the end of three hours, they can see w all the process going between making mm. a beautiful um, chair that has all the criteria that mm. um, they and we are proud of, mm. which um, ticks all the boxes. So okay. I think the message really, which is um, coming, should be coming out for mm. the whole industry is, especially at this time, is to mm. buy British, support British, be proud of British design okay. and manufacturing. Okay, so in terms of um, the consumer and what they're now getting in terms of their options on furniture, um, options in terms of um, purchasing for the home, do you think there's been a change in specification and design since the start of your career? Has it got better? Is it indifferent? Is it worse? I think it's got a lot better. Right. Um, and I think it's by aspiring for excellence, aspiring for quality. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, the, the word quality is the, the sort of key word here. Mm. Obviously, there are price differentials. Um, but it's actually knowing that if you buy British, you buy quality. Right, perfect. And also, yeah. not only do you buy quality, but you buy um, the after-sales service that's so necessary, and mm. the guarantees, and the credentials of a company. Mm. You know, we've got companies in the UK have got a long heritage. They're not here for with a double negative for no reason. They're here no. because of their their basic um, credentials, uh -huh. which are um, you know quality, excellence. So your advice would be for a British man, you know, lead with quality, you know, lead with good design, yeah, and, and shout about it. Mm, absolutely, okay, loudly. loudly, and protect the design. And protect your design too. And yeah. shout loudly about, you know, intellectual mm. property. Unless we all shout loudly about uh, the, what it takes to get a, um, a product from idea to marketplace, mm. there are an awful lot of, there's an awful lot of sweat equity yeah. um, investment yes. to actually reach market. And it's important that that investment is... Um, you know, is returned to the company yeah. that makes that investment. Do you, do you think that the, let's say, the average British manufacturer in whatever sector really understands how to protect their designs? Do they understand well, it properly? It's a long, it's a bit of a mm. long journey, but basically, mm. I think rather than the horse going when the stable doors open, it's mm. having a proactive intellectual property right. strategy. It's not rocket science. Yeah, a lot of it is common sense. So, from personal experience, obviously, there's been a situation before in your career where that hasn't been positive so you are now coming to market with some good advice and some support so if somebody well, wanted information about that who would they contact it well um our website um you know okay. acid acid.uk.com acid.co.uk oh uh, no acid.uk.com acid.uk.com yeah. okay so i think it's it's it really is about um shouting, as I say, mm. positively. Intellectual property is a positive force, mm -hmm. and it's a positive force for growth. And so many of our design-led companies, unfortunately, have been copied. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there has to be this, um, you know, real return to ethics and compliance um, and respect for IP. Okay, okay, good advice. Okay, in terms of then looking at your career and why you've been successful, let's just take the average new individual coming into the industry, let's say we're taking a young person, what advice can you give them how to be successful, let's say business stroke furniture industry combined, what advice can you give? Well I think, I mean it would be natural for me to say get involved mm. with the furniture makers but I'm, it's opened all sorts of doors to me mm. and you know ten years ago I didn't know about the furniture makers company and it was quite by chance that I met our first lady master Margaret Miller who explained about it mm. um, and really it's it's a catalyst uh, for a giving something back but also for connections uh, for sharing knowledge, you're learning, aren't you? Absolutely, too, yeah. sharing best yeah. practice. Best practice, too. Yeah, absolutely. So all the time, it's raising the bar for um, you know best practice within the industry, which we try mm. and promulgate in everything we do. Yeah, I think I think the charitable giving aspect is probably under communicated. So could you give an example, please, um, of where somebody's needed some help, not necessarily the individual per se, but a generic example sure. of what the company have done to help? Well, 
To give an example, since we started the campaign, there's been a 42% rise in people coming to us. Um, to give you an example, last week um, mm. there was uh, somebody who sadly has got cancer, right. um, but his earning capacity was um, reduced. Right. And so we were able to, to, to give a, a grant, and I think an annuity has been considered um, for the future. Mm. It's really giving a helping hand, whether it's a minor bump in the road or a major crisis. And mm. It could be either through you know, injury, yeah. um, an illness, or bereavement, or you know, stress. Right. Um, in the summer, we gave um, uh, somebody a grant so that their children children could go away for a, a two day break in the so summer holiday. That's a break and a rest respite. Yeah. Because yeah. you know it's very difficult for working parents, you know, sometimes to keep their children occupied. Mm. So it's really across the board to say that you know there's a helping hand mm. um, if you need it, and to say mm. please don't be too proud to to contact us because that's really what we're here for. So the process would be that there would be a claim made and the committee would look at those facts and make a decision? Yes, it's a very, it's uh, yeah. not a clunky decision. Okay. It's, um, it's really a phone call to the furniture makers. <coughs> this is uh, my situation. Tick a few criteria. It's not a lot of form filling. Obviously we have to set uh, you know, our own standards in terms of um, the information we need so hmm. that we're dealing with bona fide claims. Hmm. Um, but honestly, it's it's just saying, well, actually, you have a friend in the furniture makers mm -hmm. company. Um, if life throws a curveball, and who okay. knows how how you know far any of us are w away from okay. that. So, just what advice and what support does the company offer in terms of training and education? Did um, well to answer your first point. Um, mm. There's been a lot of contra controversy with regard to the difficulty that especially mm. small companies have with um, going through the hoops to get the levy right. uh, to support well, Where do I go? Suit. That's the thing. That's exactly. the first question. Yeah. So Fiesta, mm. which is the Furniture Industry Education Training and Skills um, Alliance, yes. has been set up mm. um, under the um, amazing um, leadership of uh, Gary Yes, Gary Baker. Yeah. Gary Baker, who yeah. is uh, CD UK, Correct. and he's got industry professionals together to say, how can we make this better? How can mm. we ensure that there's the right funding? How can these companies um, access it? Mm. But more importantly, to keep the training uh, levels going with the right training support. Mm. So, I think we've seen it. We've we've identified there's um, a gap. There's mm -hmm. a, we've identified that there's a. A, you know, there'll be a skills gap for the future, mm. and it's now trying to, through Fiesta, uh, galvanise the industry in raising awareness about yeah. this, so that we can support so it with a strategic. So furniture plan. makers company are fully endorsing, supporting Fiesta, getting involved as an advisory body, absolutely, and getting that message out there. And we also yeah. do that through the British Furniture Confederation, which yeah. is the, um, if you like, the political arm of yes. which we are. Uh, key members, and that that really is an opportunity to speak to government, yeah. um, to raise the issue am amongst the other hierarchy of priorities which affect the industry, and um, get government's ear yeah. um, on policy that really matters. So very important. So I guess if somebody wanted to find out information, they go to Fiesta's website. A Fiesta's we website, yeah. and also the British Con Furniture Confederation. British uh, Furniture Confederation. Yes, which is okay. um, the chairman of that is yeah. John Jonathan Hindle, who is right. a past master of the furniture okay. makers. So Jonathan's really spearheading this, um, basic, hopefully a positive conversation with government, so that the furniture industry is well and well and truly on radar. Mm. And we have Maggie Troop, who's also. Right. Um, heavily engaged with the furniture industry with all party parliamentary group that's right, right. Um, and so we have those connections within Parliament mm. so it's actually saying well what are the, the uh, priorities for our industry as a whole yeah, you can't do everything at once no, can you? no. they that's have right. a hierarchy yeah. of priorities of which that is one yes um, also you know about flammability etc safety mm. um, and so through the furniture makers and Jonathan's leadership mm -hmm. we do have that voice uh, to government Okay, perfect. So, so in, ter in terms of, um, we spoke very briefly about digital marketing earlier on. So, you know, here we are today, we're having a conversation about a message. Um, and the intention is obviously digital marketing now is very important to spread the word. Um, at, at the end of the day, uh, however much social media you get, mm. you've got to be able to deliver. Mm. And you've got to be able to sustain um, 
you know, what you are delivering. Mm. So I think that it is a, a very, very useful and fast track mm. uh, communication means. Okay. At the same time, it has to be underpinned by you know, quality and uh, yeah. uh, craftsmanship, etc. Okay, so I guess when we're, we're talking social media, we're reaching out to people, aren't we? So in, in your career, have you been a recruiting manager at some level in terms of re recruiting people? Well, obviously, within our organisation, mm. yeah. uh, yes, I have. Okay, um, within the furniture makers within company. Within the furniture makers yeah. company. So you're involved in the interview process, potentially, to get the right people to support that message. Yeah, I mean, Perfection. we, um, as you know, we have interviews for Freeman. Yes. Uh, people are invited to become part of mm. the company, and uh, there is a, an interview. The most important thing during that interview is to find out what skills that they bring. Right. Um, that we can... Uh, really sort of harness. This is learning and knowledge again, isn't yeah. it? And sharing information. Sharing best practice. Absolutely, yeah. And if, if that person wants to give back, then it's partnering them mm. with the right, you know, committee or group mm. that we can use their expertise to, you know, move that bar higher. Move it, move it further forward. So obviously in terms of advice you would give, let's say, um, people who own furniture companies, for example, what advice could you give about how to recruit the best people? What would you say is good advice? Well, you know, that's that's rather specific to the particular mm. uh, job in question. Mm. I think, um, mm. I don't know, I, I look for people who are creative thinkers. What creative thinking? Um, yeah. As well as having the right um, credentials for the job in mind. So matching the specific job. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, hands-on experience and having an right. open mind. Okay. Um, well, less about qualification, potentially more about well, experience. I think qualifications are important, but okay. um, I have very few qualifications right. so I wouldn't necessarily say that they are the most important right. thing um, having had if I had my life over again maybe I'd have got a few more but right. hey I don't know okay. I think it's really you know it's the experience that you get or well you're talking life experience here in I terms guess so of, yes yeah, yeah yeah perfect okay so final question for, for today um, thank you so far um, can you relay an amusing story from your career that um, would perhaps offer some advice um, in terms of the outcome? Um, I suppose as many of you, uh, many people might know, um, masters of livery companies have tended to be men. I'm only right. the second master uh, for the furniture makers. Um, and so on my first couple of outings, um, I gathered um, a couple of husbands because... Um, All right. <laughs> uh, people came up to me thinking that my senior warden was my... Um, was the oh, master I see, I see. and that I was a wife almost or almost you were looked past a wife or yeah. consort yes. so um, I guess it's better than speed dating right and uh, that happened again at the Dutch church over the road when I went with our clerk here interesting, and, interesting, um, yeah. the yeah. sheriff said um, good morning master and your lovely wife so this is still perceptions again isn't it I guess yeah. it's perceptions yeah. but yeah. you know one of my objectives within mm. furniture making is to have um, both age to address age and gender diversity, really encouraging um, the younger people, as I talked yes. about earlier, but also about um, encouraging women to take more senior roles mm. and encouraging and supporting so that we have, we look like the people we serve and that um, we're encouraging um, this sort of um, women to progress in our industry because it still is a, a little bit uh, predominantly uh, male mm. uh, because I think that I, do I doubt diversity brings mm. creative thinking mm. um, there are lots of statistics to show that mm. um, it's good to have a, 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 a more, really a more balanced view yeah absolutely poten potentially yeah. Yeah. So, yeah so those are amusing uh, anecdotes but uh, mm. certainly everything is changing and it's mm. changing slowly mm. and I'm pleased to say that we're, we're addressing that with I think uh, as a testament to that um, last story I think um, sessions such as today will help to amplify that message won't, won't it well i hope so i hope mm, so absolutely okay well uh did thank you ever so much for today um so this is where i now turn to the camera and say um you know we hope you've enjoyed this um legends um project in today's um, event in london in the furniture makers hall um please share it um please leave some comments if you would so wish to do so we're very pleased to see those comments and um, this is all about sharing information so thank you for watching Thank you, kids. Pleasure. Thank you.